Good day to you. Good to be here with you again as we look at God's Word. You know, as we decide to go someplace, if it's uh, driving, if it's hiking through the woods, even if it's uh, getting on the right plane at the airport. I've seen a lot of people get off a plane, or well, a few in a way in my day, that uh, I, can, and I can remember one time I was working in Wichita, Kansas, and a, and a man got off the plane one night, got off the plane from Kansas City there in Wichita. And first thing when he came off, when he, he said this, where did I get the plane to go to Orlando? I said, what, sir? He said, where do I get on the plane to go to Orlando? I said, we don't have a plane leave Wichita. He looked at me and he said, Wichita? Wichita? I, I'm supposed to be in Atlanta. I, I looked at him and I, I couldn't believe it. I said, well, uh, sir, this is, this is the plane. We don't have another plane going out to in the morning. He looked up and he said, he said, but I, I, I got to be in Orlando tonight. I was going to Atlanta. And I asked him, I said, when you got on the plane, did the flight attendant, where did she say you was going? Well, she said we was coming to Wichita, but I thought she was kidding. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe that man got on the plane, heard that, but... He was so made up in his mind that he was on the right plane that he didn't listen to the flight attendant when he said because he was so sure of himself. I say that because I've seen people that way on trails when I was hiking with the Boy Scouts and others where they was convinced they was on the right trail when they was going the wrong way or on the wrong trail. It sounds foolish. But today we have many people living in the world that has the Bible, they have the Word of God, but they are going the wrong direction. And not because of wanting to go, I can tell you for a fact that that man did not want to be in Wichita. But he hadn't followed the direction he hadn't listened to the warning. He hadn't paid attention because he was convinced in his mind he was on the right plane. So he didn't listen to anybody else. We can find out today we need to make sure that we study. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needest not to be ashamed, or rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. And I'm going to go away from the New Testament because one of the books that talks about basically uh, what we are to do and to watch out for, I believe, is the book of Psalms. Matter of fact, Psalms 1. We're going to look at part of Psalms 1 and a few other verses there in Psalms and Proverbs today. We, we read, we're going to start reading there in Psalms 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor set in the seed of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That's beautiful to me, one of the most beautiful things, but a lot of people read these words, but they, they don't put thought to it. And I think we need to put some thought to these words. Here it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We have to make sure that we are walking the right direction. We have to make sure we are walking the right direction. Matter of fact, in the other book of wisdom in the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs in chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, I'd like to read that for you at this time. In Proverbs 4 and 14, we read, Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way 
of evil. Avoid it. It says in the next word, avoid it and do not travel on it. Trust always, what? Turn always from it and, and do what? And pass on. Pass on, pass it. Pass on. We have to make sure that we are following the right path. I can remember that man when he came out and he had got on the plane. Come find out when they got on the plane in Chicago, they got on the path and they were supposed to stay on that one path. And then to get to the chute, there was one that went to the right. And there was one that went to the, well, he went to the one to the right. Other people was going to go to the left, but he wanted, he went to the right. Wasn't as crowded. <laughs> he could see the plane down there. It was the closest plane. Easiest one to get to. But it wasn't the right one that he wanted to be on. It wasn't going the right place. We have to realize we have to avoid the wrong path. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That is, the ungodly is those that just don't want to go the place or they just think that they know a better way. That they know a better way. We need to realize that it says, nor stand in the path of the counsel. We can see that they do not walk in the counsel of the God, nor stand in the paths of sinners. Somebody said, what do you mean stand? So often time before somebody decides to sin, they stand, basically. You do, have you ever been at a, a place, used to in, in, in some of the supermarkets and big stores? Remember they would have people selling knives? I always wondered why they had people selling knives. Hey, come stop here, stop. And, and what they tried to do, the, what they tried to do was to get people to stop. They said the hardest thing was not selling the knives to the people. The hardest thing was getting the people to stop. They said if they could get them to stop, they would sell something like 25 to a third of the people would end up buying something. If they could get them to what? Stop. Satan must be in the knife selling business because that's what he tries to get us to do. He tries to get our attention. They do that in the old carnivores, in the circus, where they would holler at the people, getting their attention. Sometimes it wasn't the show out, it wasn't what was inside, but just how the, the, the people sold it and how they would sell for a, a dime or at one of the, what was it, Barnum Circus. They used to say that they had a guy that was real good at getting people to stop and listen to him and buy a ticket for a dime to go see the world's largest midget. <laughs> That's right, people paid to see the world's largest midget. I forgot what a midget was or what it was. It was something like if he was three foot or four foot tall, under four foot, and they had somebody there that was three, three foot, 11 and three quarters inches. It was the world's largest what? Midget. And they said they would get people in there. Why? Because they got them to stop. Satan has us. Do not stand in the path of the sinner. Don't stand there. When we see and we know and it feels like it's wrong, then we need to do what? We need to run and run towards God. It says, nor set in the seat of the scornful. You know, they get you to look. We got to walk, walk the right way, not stop and listen. And then it says, nor set in the seat and don't stop. But what do we have to do? We have to make sure we keep our eyes on God. Because it says this, it says, but his delight, a man of God, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. What? Meditate day and night. We have to meditate on, on God's law. In Psalms 119, verses 14. I like that. Psalms 119, there in verse 14. I have rejoiced. I have enjoyed. I, I, I have rejoiced in the way of your testament. 
we got to rejoice in the way of the testament. Realize this, this is, this is the way. You know, I like to give tours out in, in Oklahoma and in the Badlands and the, the Mesa country and all this. But sometimes, you know, I, I like to take people up the uh, uh, Cimarron Valley. I like for them to take them up from Oklahoma, New Mexico up and, and then go to Mount Capitol, the volcano. And, and I like it because people love to go to the volcano and go up at 8,000 feet, look out and see the country. But many of them have told me this, going up the canyon, they said, you know, I enjoyed the mountaintop, but I enjoyed getting there too. The beauty of it. God leads us. God leads us to heaven. Heaven is not just a place we get, get to. But heaven is the place when we go and, and walk in the way of righteousness, we can rejoice, we can be happy, we can have so much gladness on the trip. Enjoy the trip. We can enjoy the trip, but we have to make sure that we don't take the wrong road, the wrong way. We have to walk the way. He says in verse 16 of Psalms 119, I will delight myself in your statutes. That's laws, his ways. He says, I will not forget, I will not forget your word. I will not forget your word. Always remember, don't forget God's word. We are to be Christ-like. Right? We to be Christ. When the devil, when the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus slapped him. No, he didn't slap him. You know what he did? He quoted the word of God. When he was tempted once, tempted twice, tempted, what did he do? It is written. He quoted God's law. I will not, we need to realize, I will not forget your word. That is what we must realize, we must see. We must, and it says, he, a man that does that, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Again, I take, I'm sorry, I'm living in, Living in Florida, but I guess my heart, my bringing up was out in the prairie of Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and Colorado, New Mexico, that country that I still call home. But I can remember, you go out there and you see, and all of a sudden if you see a tree, you see a tree down along the waters of a creek or a river, that's where you see a tree. Sometimes you see it by a house place. This, uh, this year when I went back, and every year I go back as I travel, drive from one part of that to the another, I see more and more dead trees. <laughs> what? I see dead trees because the people have left the farms, left their homestead. The trees that was in the orchards, or in their yard are dying because they shut off the windmill, pumping the water to the house and to the trees. And the trees are dying. Why? Because they are not being watered. I hate that about the trees, but I think something that tears my heart up much more than the trees is I see that with God's people. God's people, so many, they are not watering themselves with God's word. And I plead with you, any of you, if you're, if you're a new tree or a tree that just want to be planted, just want to be baptized into Christ and be planted in his likeness to rise up and to follow him and to be God's child. I ask you, I plead with you, 
don't stay away from the the well of life the word of god because if you don't stay there and stay in god's word eternal life will not be yours i pray for you you pray for me and help us both and all that we might stay in this word steady to show ourselves approved under God a workman that does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth God be with you till we meet again